Welcome back. This is the Fuel now facing off against Toronto Defiant. My name is George, still joined by Hex. All right, let's get into, into this game. Hex, there's been a, quite a few changes between these two teams over the last couple of weeks. Some new faces, some, well, old but new faces to the Overwatch League. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, I mean, there's there's nothing less predictable than a team from Texas, so you never know how Dallas is going to play. Look, they're on a pretty rough stretch here. They've lost five of their last six, but the teams they've lost to have been th teams like uh, San Francisco, Paris, Philadelphia. They lost to the, the Valiant. They, they got swept by the Valiant. Uh, or no, maybe it was the Valiant. Well, anyway, they got swept by the Titans most recently, and now like they're, they're switching up the rosters. Like there's there's ideas that they're resting players or not maybe playing their best players because Decay has been putting on the backpack and trying to carry this team, and they've still been losing to the best teams. And it's always a team that like to be a Dallas Fuel fan is to truly know suffering because you look at this team and they're close, and you're just you're wondering. Why aren't they able to pull off the win in the biggest moments? They can play teams close, they play the best teams close, but they've always been a step away throughout the entirety, all the seasons of the Overwatch League, and it's it's got to be frustrating to be a Dallas fan. Yeah, well, they've got uh, only got coming in for the DPS slot, so we're not going to be seeing Decay today. Only God has been around for an absolute age. However, I will say yeah. that he's been playing Apex on Reunited. The guy's been playing in uh, Contenders for a long time as well. Toronto, Toronto Esports is where he kind of broke out to Toronto me. Toronto Esports too. He also had a, a, a briefly disappeared and then replaced by this guy called Spectral. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure where the Spectral guy ended up going. Same. He looked the same. He played the same. Weird. It's Only weird. God then it's came back. Stuff. Yeah, it was really odd. It was like a, a different timeline we were on. But Only God uh, has been around for the scene for such a long time and... What a surprise to see him getting picked up for the Dallas roster. It's going to take a little bit of time for them to actually integrate into the roster, however, Hex. Yeah, but if, if teams are going to play Genji, then I think that Oni God can be a very good Genji. That's the hero that I always remember him on is able to carry on that. So there's a lot of pressure on him. Like, Dallas, are they resting Decay? I've heard other rumors around that. But, I mean, this is your starting six. And so Oni God has a lot of pressure on him. But, look, I mean, we talked about the history of how long this guy's been around since 2016. I mean, four years of playing. And I think you can't help but root if you're just a general fan of Overwatch like we all are. You gotta root for guys like this, who have made the grind, who have put in all the work, who every year when there's an opening slot, you're like, I would love for them to pick up Oni God. He finally gets his chance. Last week, not the best performance, but you can maybe t chalk that up to the rest of the team, not really knowing how to play around it. But now with the meta, I think he has a chance to really, really start uh, picking it up and, and dominating against a Toronto team that has been struggling as well. Yeah, they've also got some new players, of course, on their team. They've got Mr. Seb Barton on the main tank. Numlox has been around, again, forever. Uh, it's yeah. good to see him back in the league. Of course, was on Valiant all the way back when and uh, did end up playing one game, but now playing uh, a little bit more than just yeah. one, which uh, thankfully... It was, it was a throwaway game, and, like, you know, we've always liked Seb. Uh, and so it's it's really nice. Again, it, it mirrors the Oni God story of a guy who's just put in the work. A lot of guys, if they got cut from the Owl after week one, they they would have uh, they would have given up. But he just went back to it, got to the grind. you got to respect that kind of work, Jaws. Oh, absolutely. Let's have a look what Numlock has to say about this match, though. I think the chemistry is really starting to be there for the team. The last week of scrims felt really good. And finally, like, really gelling. Uh, I think I bring a lot of, uh, like, decisiveness and leadership to the team. Hopefully I help with the drive as well. Like, I've um, come a long way since season one of uh, Overwatch League. Um, you know, through contender seasons with uh, British Hurricane and Envy. Um, I hope to bring some of that to Toronto to find as well. There's always a big air of confidence around uh, Numlocked. He is just, he's got a loud voice in and out the game. Like, he is definitely going to be a, a team leader. And I think it does take a little bit of time to integrate one of those, I feel. And with Cruz on the roster as well, Hex, I will say it's it, rather British dominated, by the way. Just saying. It's uh, <laughs> not dominated. Of course, there are a lot of Canadians on that roster. But the Brits are in force in uh, the Toronto Defiant lineup, yeah. which is always quite nice. But um, it, this, there is going to be a point where I think Toronto are going to have a, this big grandioso turnaround is whether it happens this week or the next i just have a feeling about this team dallas fuel need the same thing i'm glad we're seeing a lot of new players come in it can really shake up things and when dallas fuel get into the groove with only god it's gonna be a heck of a time doha as well can be just a fantastic kind of solo carry on the side but only god 
is going to be able to help him uh, help him succeed. We see Doha at his best when he can kind of get on people's faces. I loved him on the Sombra, but sticking something like an Ash in the Tracer might be the play to go here. Of course, there are no hero pools, by the way, so the teams can play whatever they do choose. Yeah, interesting to see how it comes out. Now, Toronto, they've they've been on a bit of a bad stretch. They've they have won only five out of their last 15, but I think two of those wins are against Vancouver, two of those wins are against Boston, and one of them against the Washington Justice. So they've been beating up on, on bad teams. Not the greatest record for them, but I think Numlocked and Cruz can really provide some shot calling, and I, I like that idea from Numlock to be like decisiveness. That's what you want from your main tank. Let's go, let's fight, let's stop hitting bad and let's go forward and push it, see what these teams want to run. Numlocked on the Winston. That's interesting to try to run against a Brigida. Yeah, right. he's going he's gonna to have a little bit of a tough time, but more classic dive. Yeah. Not, well, not I mean, perfectly classic with, uh, with a Brig, but you're seeing her Zen. He's going to get bullied. Well, Doha ends up going down. Numlock with the perfect focus. With these armor packs, it's going to be tough for them to do anything. They're going to look to discord someone and insta-kill them. Dallas don't have a lot of uh, kind of burst healing or a lot of uh, sustained healing. 38 HPS, of course, from the orb, but Brig has to get up close and personal to swing and get that AoE heal. Armor packs can be... Well, they can't be plenty, uh, that, that's for sure. You're prioritizing pack in the DPS, of course. Yeah, I mean, the, the, this is a instance of the map dictating the composition too. We saw a dive in our first series on this map too, just because there's so much high ground here on city center. You need to be able to take uh, pillar, be able to take the jump pad oh. area as well. That dive comes in and just yeah. deletes. Yeah, there, there's almost no way Crimzo is going to survive that unless he has the the pre armor pack. You really have to make sure you know when the dive is coming, but that can be rather tough. Note falls off the map to reset himself. Toronto find it the first cap, and they've got a lot of ults to spare as well. Nanoblade is online. Yeah, it's not super fun to play Zenyatta against a dive team, unless your team is just going to peel back for you or go for the, the counter dive on the other end. But Anna's a little bit better to defend herself against that counter dive. Divine's in full control now, though, and they're going to have a Nano Blade whenever they so want it. Agility's back in the lineup, and Agility is very well known for his game. Oh, there's the Nano, there's the Blade. Transcend is going to come out just in time, but Paintbrush is caught out on the sidelines. Numlock falls, but you're losing a healer here if you're the Fuel. You only have Crimzo to Discord somebody. You're going to look to delete them, like I said before, but the healing is just way too great for the Defiant now. Gamsu and Doha can't survive. A uh, miracle self-destruct it would have been, but not to be. Even a Pulse Bomb is actually thrown out on top of him. Rally at the end there for Cruz. Maybe a little bit too aggressive with that. I don't know. It feels like you could have used that at the start of the next fight, but hey, you still got the armor for maybe the preceding engagement, depending how fast fuel can regroup. Every day we stray further and further from Zen's light. Paintbrush unable to sit in that Zenyatta. It gets taken out by the blade. That's really rough. And at 70 plus percent, the Toronto Defiant are in great position to 100 zero Dallas fuel on this opening stage. Blade up for Dallas, but no nano available for them as Crimzo just now switches off of the Zen onto the Ana. And a couple of tank ultimates for Defiant could just close this one out. So I was looking for it. He's like, please give me a target to Blade. He doesn't have the nano to back him up. Sleep is going to get deflected. He jumps straight on the Ana. Gets booped, though. Doesn't quite secure the kill on it, but the rest of the team did. Both supports dead for the Defiant. They know they don't really need to use anything here. No self-destruct or primal rage required. They've got 99%, so they can yep. let this one go. No need to stall out when you're at 99%. That's just feeding at that point, so that's the awareness that you need. A nice blade is able to take down uh, at least one of the healers there. And the nice thing is Dallas should be in position to win this next fight because not only do they have like Pulse Bomb and the stall out from the Primal Rage, but they're going to have Rally. Rally's really important, and Cruz only 48% on his, so Toronto Defiant might be pushing in here just to try to get Dallas to use some ultimates, wait for their next opportunity being one fight away to push in with a Rally and a Nano Blade because that Nano is charging really, really fast. Nice little stick on the back of Cruz. That's a good opening. That's an even better one from Note as well. Cruz will go down into Toronto support line. Their history. And so is the rest of their team. Dallas Fuel are able to make sure they scurry back to spawn. Although it's not the worst thing in the world. Not the worst thing at all. Only God did use the uh, the Pulse Bomb. They've got a lot of ults to spare as well. But Nanoblade available from the Defiant. 
It was just the Pulse Bomb, though. To win a fight with just the Pulse Bomb in that situation is perfect for the Dallas Fuel. They absolutely needed it. Now they just have to defend against the Nano Blade. It's going to be a tough ask, I will say that, Hex. There's the blade in the back for Agility. He gets slipped as well. Oh, my word. Can he get finished up, though? That's the question. Crimzo's alone now in the support role as uh, Paintbrush does end up falling down. That uh, Primal Rage and Winds is going to do a whole bunch. He nanos the Diva just as a panic as Numlock jumps on him and just secure the kill. He's hoping to note to try and find something, but the rest of his team are going to fall by the wayside. Self-destruct on the point. Toronto find the flip. Emergency Lucio from Paintbrush to try and get the touch. He gets instantly naded and finished off by Kariv. And now the ball to take care of the rest. Can't really do all too much now. They're even body blocking to make sure he can't just swing around the main point. There's only got going down as well. There's the blade. There's the sleep. <laughs> Straight on him again. And the nade to finish it off. Back to back blade sleeps. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, people might forget how good Kariv is sometimes, um, but I, I don't think so. Even when you're watching Toronto and they're not necessarily playing great, and they're not winning fights, you're still like, oh. I think one of the things I always see when Toronto's not playing well is Kariv deserves better, but uh, I think Kariv likes being on this team. He's got friends on this team, and guy, he's still such a top tier. Ana, uh, guy, he's such a good player. But yeah, Nano Diva. I mean, if there was an icon for a lost team fight, like you know how a, an X is an icon for a strike in baseball, it'd be a Nano Diva. Like you know, that's usually not something that you want to end up doing if you're gonna win a team fight. No, <laughs> no way. Oh, I have missing. Genji's getting slept. Agilities and Doha obviously took the L on those ones. Back to back. It feels good to be an Ana player in that situation. Yeah, but that's feel going back to the. The comp they rolled out with before. In Why the Zen. Hanzo here? But the Hanzo for Logics. We're going full Shimada. Well, this is going to be very dangerous for uh, the fuel to jump into. Logic is definitely going to save the Storm Arrows for the Gamsu or Note dive. He's going to try and pick people off on the sidelines, though. There you go. You can see now he's just managed to spot out Gamsu and Note diving in. Agility's on the back of it, though. He does manage to kill Crimzo. They do trade it out with a kill onto Cruz. Logic's had nowhere to go. Trapped inside a bubble. Couldn't even use the Storm Arrow to get away. And the Tesla coil damage through the shield. Finishes off career. Rather quick and clean team fight there from the fuel. Yeah, this works out well for Dallas as far as the composition goes because I think Gamsu on Winston is, is a really good play. I think that's what he is most known for. Able to dive in there, and it also really shuts down agility. Is now Logic's off of the Hanzo onto the offensive Torb. Uh, Torb, an anti dive hero in its own right, allows you to put down the turret, and then the overload putting down damage, getting extra armor means that you're not a good dive target at all. Just gonna cover this angle with the turret. Pure anti dive, yeah, like you said. Logic's. Just survives. That's the beautiful thing about Torb. You hit E and then just spam right click. Oh, it's so beautiful when you get a few headshot uh, markers as well. Oh, the turret finished off Only God. Whoops, Daisy. Not sure uh, where Only God was there on the backside of it all, but uh, the blade is just. I mean, sorry, the the Torb is just so good at stopping these blades coming out as well. You just hit armor key. You just hit E and then run away. It looks so funny. Doha's gonna fall. Crimson as well. Agility's cleaning up. He's got the blade. They're gonna have Nano for next fight as well. Only God taking him out shouldn't mean a whole t uh, whole bunch. They're trying to stall out for as long as possible, though. That's a lot of... Oh, okay. Uh, they want the Winston. Yeah, Nano wants a Numlocked as well. Okay, whoops. I mean, maybe they just don't really care that much because they know the Transcendence is going to come out from Crimzo to counter the Nano Blade, but yeah. like they definitely could have used it because you can still kill people in Transcendence with Blade. You have to get the Slash and Dash instantly, though, on 200 HP targets. I think it was a worried fadeaway because Kariv had just slept the monkey and then he got woken up and Kariv actually oh, died. Oh, you don't need the Nano when you can do stuff like that. Mr. Agilities, one, two, three kills with the blade. Even the Transcendents came out of Crimzo. That's exactly what I was talking about right there, Hex. That was the slash and then the dash, instantly killing people before the healing could come through. My yeah. word, Agilities. Agility's got abilities, and right there, Brady got a bunch. Really nice play. I just want to, like, I think the Logic's pick is perfect because he knew how Dallas operated their first dive, which was come around the corner with the flanks. That's why that turret was there early on, and you saw the Winston dove in. He had to drop the shield, and then he got overload killed, and then that turret was still there for the other remaining section of the Dallas dive. So a really smart move over to the Torque. Engagement with the rally for the fuel. There was no way near the blade. Oh, he dashes in and the flux comes out as well. The armor's still going to be able to stack up, but every solo. Mortal Core kills Gamsu as he returned back to Earth. 
Toronto Defiant still hold on to the point. The Pulse Bomb's gonna be able to take out Logics, but... Oh, okay, okay. I was gonna say, if Num Numlog didn't die to that, I'd be very surprised. No, at least with a couple, three kills, in fact, actually. Onto Agilities and Cruise. That self-destruct was perfect there. Split Toronto Defiant right in half. One of them ran, uh, some of them ran one way, some of them ran the other, and that's a perfect situation for both Oni God and Doha to jump on the back line and make the most of it. Well, it was kind of an improv self-destruct too, because the Molten Core came down, was able to take out Gamzu, and Note actually backpedaled into it. So he got very low, had to toss it out just to remac, but makes the best of it there. Dow was able to control the point, and now at 80% and counting up, they are about to close out this stage and send us to a stage three. Notably, there is no Nano anymore for the Dallas Fuel. Ooh, dash straight into Note. He actually headshot him with the Shuriken too. That's another kill. Oh, Brady and Blades. What goes better together? Not much else. Make that a third. Come on, give him the kill. Oh, Cruz, come on, man. Just give him the highlights. And Toronto Toronto used his blade there. Doha used his blade during that fight. All right, so Dallas will have a transcendence, but I mean, they would have liked to have it a little bit earlier. Doha's gonna actually switch to the Doomfist, try to get some insta-kill potential. But Dallas should be able to stall and then transcendence if they need it. And Oni God's gotta come up with a stick here. And that's Dallas's condition to win this next fight. Otherwise, Toronto takes it. It's gonna be so hard for Doha to do anything. He's seen getting chunked out by their turret already. Gamsu goes low, in Primal Rage, even have the nade on top of him too. Stick Good though. Pulse Bomb from Rody God started off. They're gonna use the Transcendence to try and snowball this out of control. To fight under a lot of pressure. Doha jumps to the back, kills Logic somehow. Pretty hard to kill a Torb normally, but probably out of armor in that situation. Dallas Fuel now, 93% and building as Toronto need to get back to the point. Oh, I really nice from Crimzo there. He puts the Discord onto uh, one of the together. tanks and then is able to transcend. Dallas brings it back. Nice plays there from Crimzo operating on the Zenyatta there, making sure all his utility is in play. Brings it up at the end, but that's exactly the, the operations that needed to happen. They get in there with the stall out from the Primal Rage. Uh, Gamsu was able to live through it despite getting chunked from 1,000 to 200 in what seemed like the blink of an eye. But then Oni God hits a nice stick onto Cruz, and that means that the rest of the dive is enabled because you don't have to worry about shield bash or anything like that. And Dallas goes in, exploits it, uses the transcendence healing like a sound barrier and just push forward onto the other team. And now let's go to Oasis Garden. Used to be a Pharah playground, then a soldier playground, but with the heroes that are in the pool now, I would imagine we're just going to see some more dive. I hope so. Bit of an echo Toronto's not running as well, mind you. Toronto's on double shield. They're trying the, the Hanzo again. Yeah, waiting for the dives to come in and then Logix just piles them full of arrows, turns them into a pincushion. Running off receiving the pack on the side. You can see how aggressive he can play. Plus, uh, this is kind of a perfect position for you to be as a Tracer too, because you have control of that mega health pack, which is a little bit out of the way, but fairly easy for Tracer to get on top of. Kariv just gets instantly discorded though, and a dump, uh, a dive was initiated at the back. And they, yeah, and they dumps at them. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know where I was going though. I was definitely yeah. trying to say dumpster. 100%. Well, either way, I mean, it was just super nice engagement from the Dallas Fuel tanks. Gamsu goes in very quickly, drops the shield, and it kind of makes Toronto go after him. Then Note comes in, sweeps the team apart, and on the back end, it is the Dallas Fuel damage dealers waiting for the retreat away from the tanks of the Dallas Fuel dive tanks. And they're able to clean that one up with relative ease. And now in control and counting up. And look, this is this is a point where you don't even really have to fight to get to 100%. You could stall this out for the next five minutes. Only God lets loose with a pulse on. Doesn't quite find the connection. There's still a lot of time they have and a lot of uh, ults potentially coming online. Doha can build these plays up so fast with the change, those right clicks. Just do so much work, especially to beefy tanks like the Arissa and the Sigma. However, Logic's taking out Crimzo is a, the perfect start for the perfect storm for Toronto. That will be a, a quick team fight for them. And they got Blade coming up as well. They can armor pack and even rally for this next fight to make sure agility doesn't go down instantly. Uh, Logic's is back on that Torb, and it's really good, especially when you have control of the point. But to get it, you have to win the, the offensive fight with the Torb, and it's just a really, really good anti-dive here. I think Hanzo can be that, but when the shield is always coming in from Gamsu, who's diving directly on top of Logic's as Hanzo, it's not going to get as much work done given the coordinated dives that Dallas is being able to pull off. So the Torb switch makes a ton of sense here to me. It also just kind of shuts down any route that a Tracer wants to oh. take. Yikes, I don't know where Gamsu was. I did hear the splash, so maybe he jumped in and uh, yeah, well now he's back in spawn, absolutely. 
So that's just kind of a one fight because it's very difficult to engage on a dive composition without all the pieces of your dive because you're lacking that damage, you're lacking the peel and the protection that the shield allows you to utilize of dancing in and out of it with a tracer and even a Genji. So Gamsu's back in, they're going to try to dive again. Primer in a small room. Oh, he's going to get rocked though, so uh, can't really get the juggle out. Numlock falls as well to note. They use the Transcendence aggressively yet again. Vigilantes did pull out the blade, but it got nothing done. There's no finish him off. Just no missiles, no nothing. Just plain left click, and then Crimson and Onigod just run over everybody else. And their dive has looked so coordinated from the Dallas Fuel so far, and they will end up taking the advantage in this third and final stage of Oasis. And I think it's one of the things that's easiest to integrate a new player onto your team with the dive, because Onigod, like we said, has been playing this game for years. During the two years where dive was run pretty much constantly, Onigod had been playing at a high level of Overwatch. So you know exactly what to do as a tracer with dive. You wait for the initiation, you hear your tanks land, and then you go in and clean up. It's not that hard of a concept. We'll get out. Groove has window. You don't want to match him. Oh, that was an attempted grab there. But um, he didn't manage to get it. Duh, Karim is stuck on the roof. Okay, self-destruct launched in to clear everybody out. That Molten Core is pretty intelligent, I think. Uh, just stopping people from diving in on them when the self-destruct was getting launched in as well. There's the blade from Doha. He's fully stocked up on the armor as well. Go straight for the tank. Too much damage for Nevix to deal with. Kariv and Cruz were backed off into this corner as well as you saw Gamsu and Note just try and make sure that they were nowhere near the tanks so they could heal them up. A nice little slice and die straight onto Logic 2. This should just be it. No way the Defiant can come back from this one. It's the time we were talking about. They needed to integrate Onigod into this comp and into the team even, sorry. And it's looked almost perfect from the fuel so far. This is what the fans were hoping for. Yeah, it, it's like when a player comes to a new team in any sort of other sport, but if they had played that system before, they understand it, or, or that concept of what you want to accomplish with a certain composition. Oni God been around for a long time. We knew him as a Genji, but he's a, a jack of all trades when it comes to the damage dealers. Obviously, having Doha on the Genji is just fine as well. Um, and so they just play the dive concept. They never got off of it. Toronto tried a couple of different things with double tank, trying to play it slow, trying to catch the dive. But I think Toronto has the players where they could have just counter-dived. Maybe they're not uh, feeling as well integrated with the, the pieces that they've added. But, I mean, I think it's a lot easier for Dallas to run the dive because a lot of it comes down to your tank coordination and making sure that you, you two are on the same page. And these are the same two tanks Dallas has had all year. Well, that's not the case for Toronto. However, as we move on to maps that are not control going forward, maybe dive is not going to be as useful. We'll see how Dallas holds up there. Yeah, I'll have to wait and see. Map number two coming up soon. Jump into a quick break. Do not go anywhere. Yeah. Here you go. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by Cheese It Groups. Deep flavor, deep crunch. It's a mind crunch. And by Zip Chair Game, the official chair supplier of the Overwatch League. After grinding contenders for so long, it felt really nice having my debut in the Overwatch League. Although I'm a bit sad I didn't play to my own standards. And I think to win the next game, we just have to look at what went wrong last week, build more synergy, play as a team and really trust each other. Welcome back. The Fuel start off the series. 1-0 at the helm. Only God. Been around the game for a long time, playing an Apex all the way back when. Contender's been battling and grinding out in there and finally making it to the Overwatch League. And he's made his mark already. Fuel, like, they didn't look great uh, the other week. They, they really didn't at all. And the integration of Only God, it does take time to do that with players. And you heard in the soundbite there, of course, he wasn't too pleased with his performance, but he can definitely be pleased after that map. It's just continuing that in the series. He's got high expectations for himself, and he should, and like, especially when you work that hard to get a chance at the Overwatch League, and then your first performance goes like that, and you don't really expect it. But I think he's the type of guy who just would learn from that and just put in even more extra work to, to become a part of this team and get that teamwork done. And also, we don't know the behind-the-scenes logistics. It's possible they signed him like three days before he was going to play, right? They just needed a replacement to get in there and play. Uh, so now he looks a lot better. And like I, th I think it's really smart from the coaching of Dallas, at least on the very first map, of just be like, hey, Onigad, you know how to run dive, right? He's like, yeah, that's what I did for years. Have you guys <laughs> seen my resume? Like, I'm very good at dive. He's like, what do you think about not playing the Genji? He's like, I, I know where I'm supposed to be. We can run dive. It's a simple concept concept I get it and let's go with it and the tank line initiations from Dallas were were just uh, superb I know it was exactly where he needed to be I think you know also you think about it like Diva was out of the hero pool as well so getting note back on, on Diva is super helpful it's probably his best hero and so now all the pieces are coming together for Dallas it wasn't completely one-sided as Toronto had some good fights and now the question is do they continue to play dive on maps that maybe don't always lend themselves to dive? I mean, I'm yeah, exactly. kind of a, I'm kind of a purist. I think you could dive every map, but uh, you know, that's that's why I'm not in the Overwatch League. Well, one of one of many many <laughs> one reasons. of the, yeah, one uh, of a few reasons, but you know. I mean, I play on a trackpad, so what do you expect? Um, but yeah, so that's the question going forward. Look, they, they look good on control, but control you can play dive. Oasis especially, you can play dive. The map kind of begs you to play dive on some of the points. But now as we go on to Hanamura, Will that look change? I mean, you kind of have to run a double shield on Hanamura. I mean, you don't have to, but the dive becomes a lot more difficult. But can they adjust to this now is the question for the Dallas Fuel. But you got to start winning against teams that you need to beat. I mentioned they lost five of their last six, but they were against four of the top teams in the Overwatch League and also a, a rebuilt Vancouver. So... Those are quality losses, I guess would be the college football term, but that's not, it uh, doesn't really matter at the end of the day when you're four and eight on the season. But Dallas, uh, if they get this win, I think they're going to be close to at least getting a spot into the Summer Showdown tournament, uh, which we'll decide tomorrow. And once you get to the dance, anything can happen. Exactly that. All these map wins do matter at the end of the day. So double shield for the fuel rolling out. Are we asking Honey God on the Widowmaker? It's not the worst point to play Widowmaker on. You can get some really nice jump shots. And obviously this window rather famously, you can just kind of sit in there. We've got Logix trying to contest with him on the hands over there. Yeah, but you have to play the double shield here. But it's also... It's also a nice roll to just put Oni got on because it's not a giant strategic roll. You just let him just let him shoot. <laughs> How did Logix die there off onto the sidelines? Did he receive an armor pack? Maybe. I don't entirely know. That's very bad news. Is uh, Now your only damage is going to be a Genji, which isn't the most consistent in the world at trying to do damage. Although I say that, look at Doha just <laughs> slow. That's the ghost dash. Oh my goodness, that's four kills. Didn't expect that, and he either did the Defiant. Agility finds one kill, but they still managed to cap. Anyway, Doha's got a blade. Oh, this could be a roll if they're not careful. Ah, uh, he slices, he dices. He, I mean, he gets the Hanzo super early, just living up to the lore of the map. And then the giant dash resets. Ooh, boy. I mean, they're not running the Ana here, so the Nano Blade is not going to be available, but they do have Blade a little bit faster. Logic's going to switch off and try to counter this Widow, and I think you have to because if Dallas goes in and starts fighting on the point and there's no one to contest, uh, Oni God just sitting high ground and taking shots, that's like a great win condition for the offense. So have to go Widow for Widow here. 
Oh, there's the blade for Agility. He did get stunned. He's demontality field though, but he's so low. No, just finish him off with a punch. The blade for Doha is a little bit better though. He gets the reset off of Cruz. He's just pogoing on the head of the Orisa. You're not going to escape that one, unfortunately, Seb. And now Dallas Fuel on the point. Toronto, they've got a chance though. Gamsu oh, did end up going down, but Logics, sad to say, goes down to a Venom Mine. That's two ticks acquired. They have got the Genji back on the point, mind you, and Nevix could come back with a Flux too. Yeah, this is not over. As Dallas didn't put a lot of pressure on the point, they were chasing down kills. Kariv. Okay, Kariv. Stop. Okay, please stop this man. Nice little reflect. And a dash into the corner. Logic's ended up going down. They've actually jumped onto the Wrecking Ball as well to get back to the point in time. Now, Flux was met with a lamp. They survive. Two ticks and counting for the fuel. No, someone needs to touch, so there we go. They won't cap for a brief moment, but it shouldn't matter. They've got all the bodies that they need on the point. Now it's just about cleaning on up. Logic falls, and now the ball comes in to contest for longer. Should have the stuns to deal with it, though. The Rock as well should finish it off. There you go. Still going, though. Okay, <laughs> Nevix goes in with a charge. These fights take years. There's Gariv, end up going down also. Four minutes in the time bank for the fuel. A Rock will finish off Cruz and end the push. The Fuel, starting out today so strong. They are looking good. Four minutes in the time back as well on Hanamura. It can be a snowbally map, and it could have been turned around there because Gamsu went down, but jumping onto the ball was able to get back in time. And Fuel fans rejoice. Toronto Defiant, though, just kind of letting it go by the wayside. Logic died to Venom Mine. Kind of sad death, to be honest, if you're in the Widow 1v1. And Doha was just going to town. Yeah, it should be a, a scenario like <clears throat> where you... If you're Widow, you're immune to that, right? Like, should it take damage? <laughs> like, there should be some sort of mechanic built in like that. But that that was that was a little bit brutal there. But Toronto had a couple kills. You thought maybe they could bring it back. But then Dallas just kind of just poured it on here. Note, look, I mentioned that D.Va was probably one of his best heroes. But I think he has steadily improved as Sigma as the season has gone on. You know, one of the most studious and one of the nicest guys in the league will put in time on a hero to learn it. Uh, famously for his Reaper, of course, haha. -ha. But Dallas looked really clean there. And again, I think it's just really smart coaching to put Oni God on the Widow, which is not necessarily a like play with the team, calm with us kind of thing. It's just like, hey, you do you, man. But that was all Doha. Like the Doha blades were so good. He chased down the Brig on second after he put a ton of damage on and then just completely isolated Numlock. The early dashes, the early kills from Doha's uh, Genji were beautiful. Dallas now on defense. Oni God is going to play some Ash and Doha on the May up front. May is so good on this map. Yeah, the, <laughs> funnily enough, the entranceway is a perfect size for that wall. Speed, oh, whoa, -ho -ho, okay, well, yeah. Logic's dead. Whoa. Doot, 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 Mr. Logics. What happened there? That was a couple of shots, maybe a couple of spheres, I'm not entirely sure. Only got his 20 HP, someone heal him please, there we go. Right, not only will he get healed, he'll get armor too. Woo Spoiled. Spoiled you are. Armor's pretty good, funnily enough. Right. Cruz is changing over now. He's gone to the bat instead. Agility is going to have a tough time actually getting in here because they are holding high ground and low. Although Note takes a Discord Orb and then everything else landed on top of it. And Agility's and Kriv end up finishing him off. It's a perfect pit. You play split like that. It's a little bit more difficult for the healers. Only God takes an arrow to the head. That will be Defiant now pushing on to the point. Fuel, I'm not sure they can go for this recontest unless they only got switches. No, they definitely no, no, no. can't anymore. Because yeah, Dallas, Dallas I, I kind of assumed they were just going to rotate just to try to leave. And now you just try to do something and that's yeah, that's what go. you do right there. Yep. Let's go for the reset. Yeah, Crimzo let himself get killed so that they could reset. And the wall never really came into play from the May. Uh, of the Dallas Fuel. I think you can still run it because Hanamura, the best entrance is top right, and that could be a really nice place to put down walls and isolate members of the team. No nanos on either side, though, for this blade. Oh, well, there's no blade, obviously, on the other side of the fuel. No nano for agilities. Forcing out the cooldowns from the May wouldn't be so bad either, although that blizzard is coming online so, so soon, 10% away. Cruz desperately trying to keep people alive. Those shields getting in the way of his healing. You can see everybody just going red. Oh, Agilities, though. He still gets taken down with a swift headshot from Doha, even committing the blizzard to guarantee them the fight. The point isn't being contested right now. Is Gamsu end up going down? The blizzard did actually nothing, Hex. Yeah. 
That Blizzard d did negative work at sea. All the abilities were up. The Fortify was there. I mean, Talos has gotten a couple kills on defense. Oh, this is the money spot, though. It's yeah. where you want to be. <laughs> on defense, too. They drop down and only God just turns it into a game of Duck Hunt. Yeah, they don't get a tick, unfortunately, either. Such a good start. I was a bit concerned about Agility using Blade there, but they were able to evade the May ult just so easily. Yeah. It looks so worth. Yeah, well, once you get up here on Hitscan Hallway, it doesn't matter if you're a 76, Ash, Widow, McCree. This is where you make all of your money on Hanamura. And for Oni God to be able to rotate there and get it, and now he's in that even better spot using the Coach Gun to get up top, is one of my favorite maps to play Ash on, especially on, on defense, because on first you have the bridge, and then you have this. Kariv just takes down Doha. I mean, he's going to respawn, but that's at least a small opening. Yeah, the Dragon Strike is going to create a lot of space as well, although that Transcendence will push the rest of the Defiant forwards. At least they take the high ground. A little bit of a, a big rotation from both teams, actually switching sides. They do end up trading, I say that, as Crimson Falls. Good position, though, for the, uh, the Defiant as they are on the high ground. Now they just need to pressure out this main tank. Doha couldn't stand a chance against Nevix, who have the high ground advantage on him. And now they can just set up shop on the point. Trades are fine for Dallas, though. They are able to get a couple early on, and oh, that's going to mean that Kariv has, has to switch to Lucio just to get back. Oh, man, that was sad. Agility was trying so, so hard to try and get the kill onto Paintbrush. He just refused to die. Only God ends up finishing him off. Not even a single tick acquired by the wow. Defiant either. It reverts. They still have three minutes left. We've seen some hero swaps go back and forth. Logic's going to go now to the Ash. Uh, Only God had gone to the Tracer just to get back and fight and make sure that they're able to keep staggering out the members of the Toronto offense. I think Toronto goes in here, tries to make them waste abilities. I mean, it's early enough, and if you have faith in agilities, you can let him just go in with this blade and plan on the next fight being a nano blade. Depends on how much damage they take here and how fast Kariv can charge this up. You might just wait now. Yeah, that I mean, dynamite helps Toronto a lot. And you have Taylor Rosa too. Yeah, you're going to get at least 90% off of this. Yeah, there's no way they don't wait for the Nanoblade now. They need to secure something here. It's just the defensive countermeasures from the fuel. I mean, they haven't got Rally. They can armor pack the person that's getting jumped on. Only got potentially can get Bob, but it's looking rather unlikely as he's 30% away, especially if the Defiant go fast here. Toronto's going to have Rally too. Oh, there's the Nano Blade, yeah. They posturing for it so, so well. Oh, Agilities, yeah, he got rocked. So I think he got stunned and just pushed off. And the Blade was way better for Doha. Nano or not, he actually got supercharged there. So didn't get the damage resist, but the damage buff was certainly there. That was such a good accretion. I think it was an accretion or maybe a Brig Bash. I couldn't entirely tell. But regardless, it was a stun nonetheless. And Agilities, both his Blade and the Nano Boost, just completely wasted. Yeah, I think he had dashed already, too, to start it off. So once he gets stunned, he's just kind of stuck in the hole down there. You can wall climb, but it's not the mobility that you want for that nano blade. A great shutdown by the Dallas defense. I think it was an accretion based on where he was on the map, but I think we, we just switched screens when it showed he got stunned. Toronto going to push rally. it rally. Oh, no. Look at the isolation on the side, though. Yeah, he was half HP by the time he hit the ground and uh, insta-killed with that flux. A minute and 20 seconds now remains for the fuel to defend. And they were able to just, even if Toronto Defiant secure it now, it's going to be in OT, which means fuel are going to get a free attack regardless, Hex. Yeah, you would think so with a minute left and based on how difficult it is to capture the second point of these maps. Toronto had already blown a lot of their abilities going forward. They will have tank ultimates and notably those are the only ones that Dallas is missing. So you're going to have to get a ton of value out of Flux Supercharger. It's a good ultimate in a fight that's, uh, you know, kind of mano y mano, uh, like, uh, like British cavalry facing off. But uh, it's going to be tough to get super value out of this one. Dallas in a perfect spot here. Look at the ults too. There's Doha, he's got the armor, he goes with the blade in the back line, does get stunned, but the rest of his team were able to do the damage. At least gets one kill to his name. This is going to be it, I think. No way Toronto Divine can touch the point. They've got the Bob, maybe Logix gets back in time, but they are hoping for a miracle. They almost managed to catch Agilities on the side. None looked even on the Wrecking Ball as well, Hex. Desperation time to. for the Defiant. Yeah, he has to. It's, it's not ideal, but they will be able to get a Nano Blade. Look at this. Nanoblade is, is the best condition that they have here. You can open up with a Bob to put some pressure on the points. There's also going to be a, a Flux. Toronto not out of this. Yeah, Doha knows it as well. He's just trying to focus someone out. He's found to find Logics in the side. Tried to go for a flank. Bob did land on the point, but it's going to get taken out by Gamsu. 
They are logics down. Agility's going for the blade. He requires something big. He fights two, but only God waiting in the wings, picking him up. The defensive spawns are now way too great for the Defiant to deal with. Fuel find the team wipe, and that is a 2-0 scoreline now in the series. I need to learn Genji. He looks really strong right now. <laughs> He's always been a hero I've struggled playing against and playing with. But Dallas Fuel, I, I can't say enough about how they're they're using Oni God in the right positions. And yeah, the meta allows it right now because there's no hero pools. But maybe he felt like he wasn't able to keep up with the team or what. But they're putting him in positions to succeed. And this map is just like, okay, can you can you play hit scan? Uh, get to this point. You know where you have to play Ash on this map. Perfect. We'll do the rest. Just shoot people. And they allow him to play to his strengths. And then Doha stepping up big. Look, if you're not going to run Decay, who I think overshadowed Doha rather easily in, in the first several well, months of the league, because Decay is just playing that well, now Doha has got a chance of being like, oh yeah, did you forget about me? It's not just about that guy, because all the praise that was lofted onto Decay, you know, even if you're good friends, it's a chip on your shoulder. Doha had a great Genji performance, and I can't say enough about the Dallas tanks. I think this, this tank line sometimes gets overlooked, because tanks don't look good when you're losing matches, but Note had a really good Sigma. Gamsu you playing rock solid. Yeah, I love it. Like, Note has got to be one of the most consistent tanks uh, for sure. I mean, yep. the Dallas Fuel having a backbone like that is just ridiculous for their morale and their confidence uh, as well. As people like Only God know, they got a solid tank line to back him up when he goes for these engagements. It's looking good for the Fuel. We're going to jump to a quick break, guys. Don't go anywhere. Could be the final map for Toronto. They're looking for the reverse sweep. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network, T-Mobile. And by State Farm. For auto, home or renter's insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.
Welcome to our game break presented by Pringles. Wavy Zoe here joined by Costa and Reinforce and it is happening. Costa, you're going to be a very happy man right now as you are the only one on our desk to actually predict the Dallas Fuel to win this one. Uh, Reinforce and I went for the Toronto Defiant and they're currently down 0 and 2. Uh, and we just, we have to talk about the Dallas Fuel here. We have to praise those guys. We criticized them a lot last week. The decision to not see a decay on the field really cost them and today he's not in and yet they're playing really really well they look it's a world of difference between what we saw from them last week yeah it is a world of difference but it also deserves to be said that i did predict dallas fuel on plat chat oh okay so... that, yeah, doesn't but that doesn't count. really count does oh, it? Yeah, absolutely not. Way. i earlier but... talked to nori and i told him look it's gonna be a close game does that count <laughs> yeah, it, I, okay, I, well, I would say case. so. <laughs> you know, Norris love is all that matters, so it definitely counts. True. But anyway, Point. the Dallas Fuel, you gotta give them some credit for actually coming back this week and actually putting on a good performance because we could have easily come to this game break and we could have talked about like oh it's the second week there's no decay uh, yeah. the Dallas Fuel players are choking they're not playing well they're messing up but instead they look revitalized they look energetic and they show a lot of in initiation and confidence doha is back on some comfort heroes and it really shows that they've just come into this series and thought to themselves like okay well reddit criticized us we had a bad performance but we're just gonna come into this game and show what we're made of and they're putting on a really good performance they look synchronized they keep getting good frags doha's genji has been on point and i'm just really happy for this dallas fuel squad because they, they the odds were against them almost everyone predicted the toronto defiant but they came back and showed what they're made of so really impressive by dallas fuel so far yeah, I think it's a, it, that's a really important thing to note as well as like public criticism, especially after how badly they lost last week. That's hard to come back and try and, you know, gain that confidence and play in the start they are. I do want to pull back on the reins a little bit. They are playing against oh, the Toronto okay. Defiant who haven't been that good. Yeah, we have Doha finally on his comfort hero of the Genji, which I think he has been playing phenomenal. I think he's been out playing agilities pretty much across the board. But I think you're definitely seeing the synergy and the other players from the Dallas field that we criticize so much stepping up once again. How, how do you guys feel uh, Dallas did this week with uh, implementing Onigot into their lineup? Well, yeah. it looks pretty sharp. Yeah. I, I think it's important that the, the comfort of the rest of the team really helps him step up because last week, as I said, it's impossible for anyone on their debut performance to look good with how the team was playing. While now, I think they're firing on all cylinders and you're seeing Onigod get work done. He feels like he's having a lot of impact and he's doing the role that is needed of him to the point that you look at and you're like, okay, Decay is great, but Onigod can definitely step into his shoes if needed. I also think that it's pretty nice for Onigod in this match specifically to come into this kind of meta and be like, oh, well, okay, all our ultimates and our engagements are going to be about the Winston and the Genji and sort of play around that, especially when it comes to the ultimates. And Onigod, he can just poke away and sort of do his own thing. And he doesn't have to be the centerpiece of the Dallas Fuel team, unlike last week, where it felt like Onigod had a lot of pressure to fill the case shoes and pull off a lot of work. This series, it feels more like it's about the Doha show and Onigod can sort of plug in and play his own game and then fit into this Dallas Fuel roster. So Did I you think say that own helps. Own game more. or only game? Only game. <laughs> because that's Both. what I heard. No one did the credit before it, but I'm so, not sure someone if said I heard it right. Someone called Only God Onion God. So you know, if if Only God has poor performances, we know what to call him. But for now, let's stick with Only God. Yeah, out of respect. He can stay Only God for now. For now. Uh, well, guys, I have a slight suspicion that every single crunch time presented by Pringles Wavy today is going to feature Genji because. Surprise! We have to give this one to uh, Doha for uh, another uh, great showcase of uh, Genji dominance. Yeah, absolutely. We saw him come into this attack on Hanamura. He gets the first pick on Logics that we don't see here, but then he just comes in and absolutely cleans up. Uh, we saw amazing dash resets coming from him here. Gets a 5k on the first point. What this does, charges up his blade really well and just comes in. He doesn't try and get overzealous as well with his blade on the second point. He's very smart about it. Slashing, dashing, making sure he doesn't die because on the second point of 2cp, it's very important that you don't go down. So just very clean play. And it's good to see Doha playing something comfortable and absolutely popping off because I am honestly haven't been impressed with what I've seen from him so far in the league. Yeah, I think one crucial point you hit on was how he used them on point B as well, because it showed that, especially when they were defending point B, 
he realized that he only needs to get maybe like two kills and yeah. then the defense can sort of stabilize around that and win the mad advantage so it was pretty impressive to see that doha he didn't hold on to the blade for too long he knew what he had to do and he consistently got frags with the dragon blade that helped them stabilize that defense on uh, point b hanamura so uh, impressive play from doha all around and now we've been praising the toronto defined uh no, we've been praising the uh, Dallas Fuel a lot during this uh, game break. We have to talk about the Toronto Defined as well. We're now heading to uh, Watchpoint Gibraltar. What changes do you want to see from the Toronto Defined? What can they do to uh, match up against the Dallas Fuel? I honestly think... Question. Yeah, that's a hard one because I honestly think... Toronto hasn't been playing that badly, but somehow they're just not getting the same value with the Genji. Gibraltar is a map where I expect to see a lot of Genji from both sides, so I want to see them working to enable agilities more because we've seen if he gets that space, he can pop off, but at times it's just so hard, like we saw on second point of Panamera. Yeah, I yeah mean, and also... Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, and also I wanted to say that we're going to watch point Gibraltar, and this is a map that agilities and numlock should be very experienced yeah. on and know how to play and how to control the high ground, specifically on point B. How do you control this? Uh, control the spaceship area. Numlock and agilities, they should have a good understanding of how to play this map. And so, if you want to start a reverse sweep, this would be the map to do it on, in my opinion. Couldn't agree more. Well, let's see if they can get that reverse sweep going or not on that third map. Watch point should Gibraltar is coming up right next. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles Wavy. Big crunch, big flavor.
Welcome back. Toronto fans definitely hoping for a map five now as Dallas Fuel are in match point position, Hex. As Dallas Fuel adding only God. We're not seeing Decay has been working out also well for them today. It didn't look great last week, and Only God said uh, in the small little soundbite we had earlier that he wasn't too pleased with his performance. Him and Doha should definitely be pleased today. In fact, the whole squad should be. They've been looking fire. It looks really good, and you know, last week they they had a tough one, but it's against good opponents. And uh, I mentioned their their previous maps and why they're on a, a downturn is because they've been playing some of the best teams, and maybe everyone thought Vancouver wasn't that team, but they've steadily improved too. So uh, you kind of have to look at the context of why Dallas has been struggling. They've had a very difficult schedule, which makes matches like this all that more important of a team that you know you should beat. I mentioned that the five wins that Toronto have are against some of the lower teams in the league. Now Dallas, right now in the standings of the the Summer Showdown is sitting at the very bottom at 0-2 with teams like Washington and with Uprising. Those are the only two, only three teams that are 0-2. So if Dallas wins here, they get in position to not have to play in a play-in game. Both uh, Washington and Boston play later today. So if you're a Dallas fan, tune in for the rest and see where your team ends up in these standings. But very important, and especially getting a 3-0 here would be important because our tiebreakers are a map differential. A lot of teams are going to be sitting at 1-2, which is where Dallas would be. So you, you want to get that map differential down from right now it's negative five it would go down to negative two i believe so with fuel looking to close this one out and i believe our next map is going to be gibraltar we were just talking like you can you can theoretically run dive on gibraltar it's a good map for it a very vertical map dive 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 it's going to be and i, I don't, how do you stop the dive i don't know no she's so consistent i think gamsu is also uh, doing a fantastic job of just creating space for only god only god of course i i believe I believe he's playing on ping too because he is uh, still in Norway. But okay. Dallas Fuel's dive just looks so clean. Toronto, I, I'm trying to just come to mind what they need to do better here and to, to stop the Dallas Fuel from doing anything. Because it feels like a lot of the time we're seeing Doha kind of set up and almost bait out things uh, like the immortality field, etc. Not with the blade, mm -hmm. just individually. And then he would obviously wait as you will with the Genji, build the blade, wait for a mentality field to be baited out, and then kind of dive on in. But um, it's really onto the, I feel, the Toronto Defiance backline, Cruz and Karib, to shut this down because there shouldn't be a situation, I feel, where the blade is getting so much value without the nano. You've got so many stuns and everything else, yeah. even the armors. Uh, he shouldn't be able to do as much as he's doing. Well, I think when you're a Genji like that and, and how Genji is operates is you're able to force out abilities just with a nice little combo of, you know, a right click, a dash, a melee, and all of a sudden the DPS or, or not the DPS, the support line's panicking. And whether that means a panicky mortality field, a panic bash, uh, or a, a panic nade, it's not good because you want those abilities up and he's doing enough to force them down. Early on here, Dallas just looking for those little cheeky kills, but Dallas could run just pure dive here with a Widow, because uh, Gibraltar is a really good Widow map, or an Ash. So I would expect them to go that way. Toronto, if they're going to try to play catch the dive, which it looks like they're not, they're just going to mirror the composition, I would expect to move Logix onto McCree and see if he can get something done there. But right now, both these teams running oh dive with a Widow. God. Deleted. Yeah, Numblog took a lot of damage down and below just by Doha and everybody else. Forced to use the shield, was naded, jumped up, and Doha got the cleanish right click and then dashed through him to finish him off. That was a, a very quick and clean kill by the fuel. They granted so much space at this point as well because Toronto cannot control this high ground without Numlock there. Yeah, holding on to this uh, box up here is very important, and you're going to see both the tank lines of both teams just kind of jockey over it and try to get the position here. It's the first area you want to be able to control as an offense and, of course, as defense. Server room push, though. Yeah, control this mega health pack is pretty important. No angle as well for Logix to kind of get uh, get a sneaky headshot. Gamsu jumps in, finds both supports, and now all this damage is going to be permanent unless they find those little health packs, which is rather unlikely now. Can be a little bit more stall out on the payload for agilities, but that should be all said and done. Logix hops out with the grappling hook, but it's going to be a hard-fought test now to try and get back to the point. Yeah, they don't chase that Widow because they know there's going to be respawns come in, and it's got to be so frustrating for Kariv right now. He's hitting all the sleep darts he has to, but there's just too much to account for. Nano, Blade, straight on the back, deflected the sleep, dashes in, gets the reset on Kariv. Oh, and oh, dearie me. Oh, the pause are possibly the worst time. That is uh, unfortunate. He was going to get a 6k, I promise. I promise. <laughs> I was the I mean, perfect timing from uh, Doha there, knowing exactly... Oh, auto... 
Oh, it might be yeah, also it, it appear, oh, okay. Yeah, it appears someone DC'd or dropped enough packets to make the server DC. Uh, that's one of the features that we have here in in uh, Overwatch League is that the server, once it detects that someone is disconnected, will auto-pause the game. That way you don't have to put the onus no. on the administrator. I mean, I used to run administrations and or being an administrator for tournaments, and whenever a player asks for pause, I never knew, like, oh, do I do it now? It's the middle of a fight, and it's, it's really yeah. tough. So we have an auto-pause, and I believe someone just gave us a weather report that there's a <laughs> storm outside. Oh, no. um, Hopefully it's not there outside. That would actually be the worst. Was that Logix who said that? I think Logix so. said it, yeah, about yeah, someone so. else. Hmm. I don't know. Regardless, it paused someone as DC. <laughs> uh, Numlocked is paused anyway because he has slept right now too. But I mean, that blade, look, he gets he gets the Ana, but it's also good if he gets nothing there because he completely cut the team apart. That's why like that corner is so interesting to push, uh, whether you're tanks or, or anything like that, because they can't come in. So now there's three people on the other side of the wall. You know, They're just playing the wildlings over there. And even if Doha doesn't do anything, he split the team up in half, but you know, luckily he gets Kariv there too. And Kariv had nano boost ready. So a really beautiful blade and Dallas looks pretty unstoppable right now. And I, a lot of credit has to go to go to the tank line. And Dallas yeah, also has completely retooled their support line, too. They've got several supports sitting on the bench, but Crimson and Paintbrush are starting to gel. Yeah, Doha played that perfectly, too. He didn't use the dash when you... Because you get the dash reset when you uh, pull out mm -hmm. the blade. He dashed in, pulled out the blade, got nanoed, and then waited for the damage to get reflected. You saw the sleep dart, and you can kind of hear it coming out of Arna's gun, plus the animation, too. If you want to bait a Genji, by the way, or bait, uh, bait a Genji or, like, a flashbang or something like that, if you melee... Is uh, McCree or Arna? It can sometimes look like the animation of the yeah. of the sleep dart or the flashbang can be used rather sneakily to stop uh, Genji from insta deflecting you. As a tip to take into your solo queue games, can we well, go if you want to if you want to like bait out sleeps and flashbangs if, as a Genji, just dash straight into the air because so many Genjis just telegraph that they're going to blade by dashing straight into the air to line up the targets to get that dash reset on the way down. So just dash straight up and uh. Yeah, maybe just a McCree panic flashbangs or something happens there. Just like we're going to go to quick break, guys. So without these tech issues, we'll be right back. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yo. Hello. Oh, I should get it. He's clanking, dude. Okay. This is pregame ritual, whatever that is. <laughs> they disabled voice lines. 
Oh, never mind. It wouldn't go. I don't think you can spam it. <laughs> Not very professional, you know? Is I it... am a very professional hey. player. Right. Where's space? He's out of this world. Aha! <laughs> I should have more space than their hits gun. No, they have space. Eddie, 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 Eddie. Eddie? Eddie mic not working. I love Eddie, dude. I don't know why when you say Eddie, I think of some construction worker. Eddie. Toss me a brick. Eddie. Bad boy, Eddie. Bad boy. Eddie. Eddie. Bad boy. Can't hear Gator, guys. He's right here. Unlucky Gator? Guy. Hello? Hello? Gator. I can hear him. <laughs> oh, okay, well played. Well played. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 I'll show you. No, I'll show you peek. We are used yeah. to the bait. It does not matter. I like Marcy. I just, I just got okay. notified that your cam's coming through now. Smile. I'm being watched. Smile. 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 You're being watched. I'm watching. Oh. Smile. Hello. Leave to the fans. Oh. User oh. has disconnected. There are now oh. no connected users. Oh my users. god, they well, left. You know, he didn't like what he saw. <laughs> he didn't want to see that. <laughs> One look at Shredlock in the camera just saw. Well. One look at Shred and Blizzard is not going to ask Justin for Shredlock's camera again. <laughs> uh, he can keep it off. I hate sweaty hands, that's annoying. Just lick them. Won't that make them sticky then? Uh, admin, do we have like an ETA to lobby? Five minutes. Shut up, OG. <laughs> Wait, actually, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Don't say damn. Why? Say darn. Oh. Yeah, say darn. It's part of the lore. <laughs> way, way better. Lore. Okay, it is part of the lore. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I'm not encouraging this. Great. I'd like you to know that I do not condone this. I condone That's this. fine. Hey guys, welcome back. Apologies for the brief pause. Apparently Cruz can never outrun at the English weather. Apparently there was a storm <laughs> near him and it potentially knocked out his power and slash or internet. Um, so we're hoping he can come back ASAP. Obviously, we, fortunately we can't control the weather. Uh, maybe yeah, I mean, in the year 2400, maybe we could, I don't know. I was always confused by the phrase that the sun never sets on the on the British Empire, because it seemed like the sun's never out on the British Empire. That's what, you guys have the worst weather out there. Twice a year, the, maybe. <laughs> I think maybe. like the one time I was in London, I didn't see the sun at all. Um, yeah, other than that, it's a, it's a very nice city, very nice people. Um, oddly enough, good cuisine. I think I ate some duck there. It's very good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're just waiting on Cruz to maybe reconnect and you know things like that. We we want Toronto to have the best chance possible uh, going forward, and especially against a Dallas team that is clicking on all cylinders here. Jaws. I mean, we've talked we've talked endlessly about the damage dealers, uh, and we should. And it's an interesting situation going on in Dallas. Uh, the support line is stepping up, but to me, the best players so far today for Dallas have been their tank line. Yeah, super consistent. Note always seems to fill that role, and that's what you need from your tanks. We spoke about action pack last series. Have a consistent Sigma player or just a, an off-tank player. Your team's going to do exceptionally well, and Note is just that. Gamsu alongside him as well. Gamsu has had such a crazy history, not in, not even including Overwatch, but uh, was a League of Legends player beforehand. Yeah, yeah. It's, he's had a crazy tenure in esports in general, always used to high-level competition. I mean, him and Note have just been performing, I think, out of their minds on, uh, on a comp that suits their strengths rather well. I mean, let's have a look at what Note has done over the last year. Let's have a look at some of his best plays. Note the hero, what an addition to this team this guy's been. Note, big boy with big bombs. Ah. Note comes in over the top, that's huge. Note will find four. Self-destruct and Note gets two. Do not pass go, do not collect $200. Note gets another one. How many times? Note may have shut him down. Dallas Fuel, they take it home! Definitely think Note's happy about Diva being back in the in the meta and just not being taken out with the hero pools as well. Diva is definitely a speciality. Sigma is pretty clean as well, I will say. That text. Again, guys, apologies for the brief pause here. We are having some uh, problems connecting to Cruise. Cruise is a a little bit of a weather issue currently. <laughs> Happens. 
I, th I think you make a, a good point about Note too. It's it's so interesting to watch fan reactions based on uh, you know no matter what. But Overwatch at its core is, is such a team game that when your team loses, people are like, replace the supports, replace the tanks. Damage is fine because damage can almost always look good no matter what situation. You can get a couple flashy kills when a fight's lost, but your tanks are almost never gonna look good when you lose and you're getting outplayed, and your supports are almost never gonna look good. Uh, so you, a lot of the flack gets misdirected, I think. But you can see when, when things work well and everything's working in concert that these guys look like superstars. And yeah, D.Va being back in helps note a lot. But I think if you're going to be a top tier team, you need to be able to play the Sigma and the D.Va at the very least. So you can run dive and you can run double shield. And that's really what we're seeing out of the Dallas uh, front line too. And Doha stepping up big. I mean, one of the guys I wouldn't think of as, you know, even the third best, well, probably the third best Genji on his team. But he's had a great Genji so far today. And... I guess we're in a Genji meta. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. yeah I think I it's mean, safe to say now at this point. Definitely. Yeah. Just going on the buffs from Genji, it's kind of solidified him as more of a, <laughs> a consistent pick now. The Shuriken spread change is pretty crazy. The amount of damage you can do it, it like, because normally it was, you have to do it pretty short range. But uh, yeah, yeah. With, with the spread reduction, it's, I wouldn't say a medium range tool, but like, it's way more consistent than it's ever been. So it's really good for Genji players that like to get up close and personal and even play at range, right, which we saw a little bit earlier on. Um, let's talk about the, the Defiant, because we've talked a little bit about uh, fuel, maybe a little bit too much, but um, what we're kind of seeing right now, we what just trans uh, what, what just transpired in the in the game before the pause was Doha jumping to the back with the Nano Blade and Agilities and Kariv just so close so, so close from actually getting their own Nano Blade off. It's uh, a pity Kryn had to back all the way up and then it was eventually yeah. killed by Doha. Um, and Agilities now can't, and it's not really in a situation to blade, otherwise I think it's a little bit wasted because second point, you're either what it feels like you're even going to get hold for a turn, held for eternity or you're going to end up getting steamrolled and they need that Nano Blade to stop that steamroll potential. I mean, the issue right now as well for Toronto is you can't really change this composition without adding another weakness to it, right? So if you want to really try to prevent the dive-ins, uh, they tried to prevent it with a Hanzo earlier and then a Torb, and, and neither of those worked great. The Torb actually worked better. A McCree doesn't super help against the Genji unless you end up flashing your own face. And even if the McCree was able to shut it down, then you're getting outranged by this Widow on the other side from Oni God. So you kind of are forced to run a mirror matchup against Dallas, and Dallas just looks better right now on the dive mechanics. And yeah, Dallas has added some new pieces, but they've also played together with the tank line a little more. And, you know, we talked about Numlock being a great player and being decisive and all of those things, but he still hasn't really played with this team a ton. Cruz is a slightly new addition, and it's kind of a, a revolving door of the the damage players for this Toronto team. So they've never really been able to settle and gel. And when you're talking about dive, I think that's more important than everything. It's just not even having to calm, knowing that, oh yeah, that's where he's going to be at this time, and then I have to do this. It just becomes instinct. Uh, again, I do apologize, guys. We're going to jump to uh, hopefully the final break before we get back into the action. We'll see you guys in a second.
Sinatra fights. Can they get the kills? You bet they can! Sinatra, oh man, what a shutdown! Sinatra, it's been a long time in the making. Absolutely unreal player. This is why I would have him as my MVP. Sinatra's MVP skin, it's gonna be out of this world. I'm gonna start a phone video. Hey Jay, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good seeing you again. Yes, uh, sir. Yeah, so we're super excited to show you this skin. I'm very excited to see you. I've been waiting for so long. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> okay, you want you any words? Yeah, we really hope you resonate with it and you like it. All right, so I guess we'll do a virtual drum roll and reveal where we ended up. Virtual <laughs> drum roll. All right. Here we go, ready? Okay. Okay, damn. I don't know if that's a bad word, but I'm sorry about that, but <laughs> I love what you guys did with the the suit and you guys did that with Alien, which is crazy. I mean, it looks amazing, actually. Yeah, David found a really, really interesting intersection with the suit and the Alien, Yeah, which was like this kind of like retro Hollywood Alien movie, FBI kind of vibe. <laughs> that's a great skin, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> That's probably the best Zora skin too. Yeah, I'm super excited about this one. So what really makes this skin unique is are all the little small details that we put into the skin. Her eyes glow, yeah. um, her tentacles glow, and she has these two antennas on her head that also glow. The pink tentacles was, was like a huge thing. I, I feel like that really brings in Zarya's character. The energy uh, nodes that show up when, um, when she's fully charged, I think was really cool. The eyes are really cool. I want to make sure we get to show off the eyes. When she blinks, she doesn't blink like an actual human being. She blinks sideways. Yeah, the eyes are crazy. The eyes are actually crazy. On her sleeve, there's actually the MVP and championship badge. Oh, I saw the thing on the sleeve. Oh, you did? Yeah, the trophies. Yeah. yeah. Trophies. yeah. It's very subtle. It's really about that contrast between that sleek suit and that and those chrome details. I love the alien vibe for sure. Um, so Jay, who are you eyeing for the 2020 um, Overwatch League MVP? Everyone always says Carpe in my stream. They always say Carpe, 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 Carpe. But I believe in my boys, Ants, Rascal. They've been doing really good because I've been watching the, the shock matches. So uh, one of those two. I'm going to say Ants for Rookie of the Year, Rascal for MVP. There you go. Nice. Nice. So yeah, Jay, um, we were really inspired by your play last year. So we feel really privileged to be able to dedicate this skin to you. So we hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much. This skin is awesome. Thank you for showing me it early. <laughs> I look forward to playing with it. Thank you, Jay. Hey guys, welcome back. It's been a bit of a long pause, but we have the solution for you right now. Unfortunately, as you can see on your screens, uh, Cruise power has gone out. Unfortunately, the storm has not uh, subsided, so we are going to have to reset the map, and we're going to have Roki come in for the Defiant. <laughs> uh, even if you're a Defiant fan, you might be wondering who. Uh, Roki hasn't played in almost two months now. Um, a loss against the Gladiators. That was the, actually the only match he has played for the Toronto Defiant this season. So obviously non-ideal circumstances for the Toronto Defiant. And I was just mentioning how this team has had this kind of revolving and evolving roster throughout the year. And maybe that's hurting them in some of these compositions, which require you to just know where the other person's going to be without having to clutter comms. And now another piece of the puzzle is going to try to fit in. So we will have to reset the map, which, you know, is kind of tough for Dallas. They were They were rolling right through Gibraltar there. Yeah, they were. They already had the nanobite up, on, uh, up online, but it just happens. Unfortunately, you can't control the weather. It'd just be like that, unfortunately. Yeah, there was but, a, a British series. It was called The Avengers, I think, before the other Avengers came out. Oh, in which the yeah. Main, the main villain yeah. wanted to control the weather. So, fine, you know, fiction becomes reality. Why not? It's 2020, am I right? I feel like that's happened in Scooby-Doo as well at some point before. <laughs> I feel like it's happened in every like, kid's cartoon where uh, there's an evil villain that wants to control the weather. I think yeah, it definitely, definitely happened in Smurfs. Smurfs? Uh, way, yeah, Smurfs. Way back in the day, I think. What year is this? Gar Gar Gargamel, I think, was the villain. It was even before my time, so uh, 1910s, I believe. A couple years before I was born. No, no, I'm just joking. I was going to say, the Smurfs like that old, surely. That would be <laughs> ridiculous. This is what happens in pauses, guys. This is why we don't like pauses. We end up talking about the Smurfs. Every time without fail, a pause brings me to Smurf references. God, I like speaking yeah. of Smurf. San Francisco is playing tomorrow. Oh, nice. I'm probably going to say something yeah. more about Smurfs. They're a cartoon, but no. I'll tell you what I do like. Uh, no. 1970s Ewoks. 
uh, from the, oh, yeah. the Star Wars franchise. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to have a VHS uh, tape of the Ewoks around my grandparents' house. Yeah. I used to watch that just all the time. It was only three was episodes. Ewoks or was it? Oh, Ewoks. okay. So there was a movie, uh, Battle of Endor, um, yes. which featured mostly the Ewoks. I had a, I had a Wicket, uh, which was one of the main Ewoks stuff. Yeah. In when I was very no, young. I think they may have made a film as well, because I know there was a series. And obviously Battle of Endor was a, was a film, yeah. Battle yeah, I know there was, it's impossible to find that series. I think it's online somewhere, uh, maybe on YouTube at this point. I'm not entirely sure, but it's a fantastic cast <laughs> animated pro- series. It's probably on Quibi, you know? <laughs> the, the ad I get every yeah. night when I want to watch uh, Overwatch League. Yeah. Maybe. Quibi with us, Quibi on us. I don't, I don't know what any of it means. Let's not recite the advert now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, always been on quite a lot. But yeah, it's, it's kind of. I don't know. The, the, I'm going to go watch the animated series. It's funny because when you watch that stuff back now, people have clearly ported it from a VHS tape to uh, to a PC or to like to CD then to PC. So it has all sure. like the static lines and stuff and the tracking. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes that will have the tracking at the start, like where it tries to align the the, the uh, VHS tape in the VHS player. And a lot of this stuff's probably going over people's heads. Um, <laughs> like what's a, what's a VHS? Yeah. What's a tape? What is a cassette tape? Well, a cassette tape, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I mean, a, like. Yeah, do people, do people know what, like, CD-ROMs are now? <laughs> Good point. Yeah. It looks like we're going to toss to watch point for a little while, though. Roki's just setting up, so we'll see how the desk feel about this change. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network, T-Mobile. Hello and welcome back once more here to our Watchpoint desk. Zoe here uh, joining me are Custa and Reinforce, of course. And uh, we're uh, trying to get into that third map again. And we are uh, unfortunately having to make some switches. Well, not we, but the Toronto Defiant do since uh, Cruz, uh, you know, broke his internet. As it just sometimes happens. Yeah, why, <laughs> I think Cruz? It, I, I think why did you actually, do that? Yeah, Cruz, why didn't you just not do that? Uh, no, but I actually think it went down like in the entire city or something. Or let's just no. His say apartment complex lost power, which is, it's you know, unfortunate. Like an entire city. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, you know, obviously the production should have been able to, you know, cover all the power. No, it, we can't cover everything, and we can't control everything. So exactly, but what they can control situation. is uh, to make uh, substitutions now. So uh, I believe it is correct to say that uh, Roki will be coming in instead of Cruz. We did see a lot more from Roki earlier in the season. Uh, what are your thoughts on that player and on that player within that team? Well, it's you know difficult in the middle of a series to sub in a new yeah. main support for your team, especially when Cruz has such a 
powerful personality and shot calling ability he likes to be in the center of things and control the team etc and he's a big force behind this Toronto Defiant team so it's going to be a rough transition I'd like to believe with Roki coming into this lineup that being said I don't think that it's going to be necessarily a huge downgrade because Roki has the Overwatch League experience and he has been playing Overwatch a lot so it's not a huge downgrade, perhaps in individual skill, but perhaps it changes the communication a little bit, the old tracking, etc. And those are the things that matter, obviously, when you're down 0-2 against the Dallas Fuel. Yeah, I, I think it's also how much practice he's had with the team as of late. It seems like ever since Cruz joined the team, they have been playing a lot with him. So I'm not expecting Roki to have a lot of scrim time and practice time. So it's going to be interesting to see how he fits in the team. Obviously, unfortunate situation, but Roki has been a good player in the past and has definitely been able to hold his own. So I don't expect it to be you know, some ridiculous downgrade, as Johnny said. So I, I think we'll see it business as usual. Right. Well, as so far, unfortunately, business as usual didn't quite work out for the Toronto Defined. If we're rolling back right. map one as well as map two, uh, it was all Dallas Fuel. Uh, they uh, they have been firing on, on all cylinders, as we so often say. And a lot of that was just uh, really due to great teamwork, really good cohesion, and of course, individuals popping off such as Doha. But I want to talk about their tank line a little bit. I think Hex hyped them up as well. Gumzu and Node, just such a reliable tank duo, reinforced. What are the ups and downs of Note and Gamzu? Well, I mean, these two have been playing together for forever, right? And I mean, Gamzu had that stint with the Shanghai Dragons and he won stage three last year. But Gamzu and Note go way back to the Boston Uprising in 2018 and they know how to play together. They have great synergy. I would like to say that Gamzu perhaps isn't the most aggressive Winston we have. I think that he's very consistently neither too aggressive or too <laughs> defensive he's like somewhere in between where he's good at controlling space but then he can also go in and he played a lot of wrecking ball last year as well so he can have that aggression to him but he's not a bumper is essentially what i'm trying to say yeah. gamsu is not a bumper <laughs> um, but he is good at facilitating space and setting up your projectile dps player for uh success and i think that's what he's done with doa here today is that gamsu and note they control the space for their team and they beat the Toronto tanks in that regard. And then they enable Doha with that space to do what Doha wants and executes and they make space for him. So that's sort of what I think Gamsu is known for is being able to establish space, controlling it and setting up his damage player for success. Yeah, I, th I think it's important to take that in note when we see matches like we saw last weekend. Gamsu and Note are consistent, but they're very rarely the ones that are taking over a match like we see other tanks do. And that was that can be a massive negative for the players around you aren't popping off and they're not utilizing the space that you've seen. So that's why we do see a very fluctuating you know, value of Gamsu and Note. They have some games where they are really impactful in the fact that they're doing their job and then everyone around them is you know, facilitating off of that. But then sometimes it just looks like nobody's doing anything and that the tanks aren't doing anything because nothing is happening around them. So I, I agree that they are one of the more consistent tank lines, but they're definitely not flashy. As Johnny said, there's only one bumper, and Gamsu's like 18 levels of aggression below that. So yeah, I think if, 18? if, if yeah. tank duels were ice cream flavors, I think Gamsu Note would be vanilla. Yeah. Like just as but vanilla vanilla's good. Can get. Yeah, Sometimes no, it goes like with everything. Vanilla. Like, I think you can throw vanilla in there, and it's just, it's a solid pick. It's I'm so more of a exciting. strawberry guy. Stra yeah, exactly, okay. but they're not oh, strawberries. No, strawberry's the worst <laughs> flavor. Wait, it's actually what? the most artificial flavor of ice cream you can have. It's yeah. Strawberry is the one flavor which never actually tastes like strawberry. Yeah, but exactly. can't you make your own strawberry ice cream? I mean, yes, you like can, but that's not going to taste like a strawberry. Yeah, I mean, I have an ice cream maker and I do make my own. And yes, I do enjoy my own strawberry ice cream. But I'm elitist yeah. like we're talking, that. <laughs> we're talking like Neapolitan, right? Uh, the, the one which has the strawberry, the vanilla, and the chocolate, right? Like, everyone has a favorite. Strawberry is definitely the lowest tier of those. What? I, I no, yes. Twitter. Uh, Twitter, help me out okay, here. I, no, okay, no. Here, Come is, on. here is an aggressive take. I hate vanilla flavor. Oh, okay. Period. Well, so uh, this is just, this has become <laughs> chaos. How well, okay. Speaking of chaos, <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's talk a little bit more about the Toronto Defiant. Uh, since we just talked about the tank uh, duo from uh, their opponents, I want to get your thoughts on Nevix and Numlock. I feel like in the last few games, we actually praised those two uh, guys, uh, saying that they have stepped it up. Numlock did look good in that lineup. Um, do you think they're performing up to their standards today? I mean, that depends on what their standard is, right? You gotta set <laughs> yeah. the standard somewhere. I don't think we can have too high standards on both of these tanks going into this matchup specifically. I think that they've showed throughout the season that 
you know, they're perhaps not the strongest tank line within the league. And obviously, Numlock is new to this team. You know, he joined not too long ago, it was just a few weeks ago. And he hasn't really shown that much Winston so far. Uh, but historically speaking, I think Numlock has the ability to be one of the better Winstons in the league if he can reach that level. I don't think he's there yet. But it wouldn't surprise me if, for example, going into this matchup, Numlock and Nevix would have been the superior tank lineup over the Dallas Fuel. So it depends on where you set the standard. But I think in this matchup, if Toronto wanted to win, they would have had to rely a bit more on Numlock and Nevix to help out in that department. Because these are two tanks that certainly are capable of contesting that sort of like middle of the pack uh, kind of tank lineups within the league. Yeah, I think it's also really hard to judge at times because they've been playing a lot of Orisa Sigma. There hasn't been a whole lot of dive from them. Uh, so I think it's kind of interesting to see the style that they play. But with, you know, Numlock has been, you know, historically a very good Winston and a good Reinhardt. So he has pretty much all the main tanks under his belt. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing more from him as the league develops and we see more metas. And, you know, he's not you know stuck on the Orisa where he's... Very, you get a lot of value from pools and stuff like that, but it's not as flashy as the, the Winston and the Reinhardt. Yeah. I, I also want to say that I think that Nevix Diva necessarily doesn't really shine in this meta per se, because right now we have a meta where it's very brawly and you're trying to stick together and you're trying to utilize either Baptiste or you're trying to utilize the uh, Brigitte uh, surrounding healing, right? Whereas Nevix, remember, when he played for the San Francisco Shock and got coached by Krusty, Diva was more of a flanker kind of role where you would be able to take high grounds and contest from the side. Sort of what like Sigmas like to do in this day and age. So I think that Nevix, I think he wants to sort of breach out of this brawly style and maybe play a bit more by himself and take that space like he did on the shock. But in this meta where it's way more brawly, he's forced to stick with his team and it's harder as a result really shine as the off tank. So... I mean, they're playing a lot of Orisa and Sigma, of course, and you got to stay together as well. But I, I think they have more, you know, in their arsenal than they necessarily show in this matchup, per se. I want to I wanna talk a little bit about the meta. I mean, of course, coming into this, we speculated and based off of scrims, we made some assumptions of what we possibly will be seeing uh, being played in the official matches. Now, so far, of course, there was a lot of Genji. With the Genji changes we mentioned earlier in the day, uh, that shouldn't be too surprising. However, we did still see some teams relying on like a Widowmaker and Tracer combo. Uh, are you surprised to see uh, some teams not opting for that Genji, Costa? Uh, it's interesting because we saw the Houston Outlaws not really play a whole lot of it. And they actually had a lot of success today while Florida Mayhem sort of forced it at times. So it's, it's kind of interesting to see how some teams are trying to adapt it and some aren't. Genji is changed fundamentally it seems the way that they're playing it it's less about just building up that blade and you know the whole th the whole character is built around the blade and it seems like he adds a lot more brawl aspect and can do a lot of damage even when he's not using his ultimate so even then people are using their ultimate not to dive the back line but just to swipe down tanks create a lot of pressure force a lot of ultimates out and it's sort of changing the way he's been uh being played so it's really interesting uh i'm just very surprised about the apac region we usually see them play Genji and play Dive first, but they didn't really play it so far last night. But we see a lot of it in the North American region, which is very backwards to how it usually is. Yeah, and I agree with that as well. I think perhaps we should be able to see some teams being able to play without the Genji. And I mean, I think the San Francisco Shock are a good example of a team that could make this double shield composition work without a Genji. But then again, you have Rascal, right? So maybe he tosses that out and then you'll see what happens against the Philadelphia Fusion tomorrow. So um, I would like to believe that you could play without a Genji, uh, but it definitely seems like the flavor of the month is Genji. I don't know, I was going to tie that into ice cream somehow, but I didn't. <laughs> I, I don't know like, I like a good uh, throwback to earlier. Uh, Genji will be, yeah. Pistachio? What type of flavor of ice cream? Pistachio? Yeah, I'd I feel like Genji's very that, easy. Oh, man. Yeah, maybe okay, matcha. we're in. Let's go. Oh, much. Mmm, that's even better since he's chopping. Oh, man. Meta games being played here on the desk. We're killing it. <laughs> uh, but you know what? You're you're free to, to leave now. As in, you're free to stick around because we're heading into the next game. We're done here filling. So thank you so much for joining us. And map three is ready to go. Toronto Define trying to start their comeback right now. The Overwatch League is brought to you by State Farm. For auto, home, or renter's insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The Overwatch League is brought to you by State Farm. For auto,
Hey guys, welcome back. We're about to get into game. Do not worry, the problems have been resolved. Roki is going to come in and Cruz is going to uh, hopefully get his power back at some point. That could be rather frustrating, regardless if you're in an Overwatch League game or not. But um, just to give you a small update of what's going to happen, uh, because Dallas was so close to the first point and capping it, they will be awarded the point there and the time bank going into the second phase, into the little warehouse, it will be 4 minutes and 50 seconds on their clock and no one will be with uh, Alt Charge, so it'll be kind of a... Uh, like a fresh reset from that point. Yeah, I mean, Dallas definitely earned that first point, but having the ultimates reset does hurt Toronto a little bit here because they had Nano ready before Kariv died. They also had Blade. Uh, the last thing that I, I, it's not necessarily clear to us is where they're going to spawn, but I imagine if they give them that first point, then spawns will move to second yes. point spawns, which again would favor Dallas in this scenario because going into second point of Gibraltar, you would like to set up on the on top of the shuttle as the defense. But I guess since they're equidistant, maybe it won't and everyone's respawning for the defense. It's an odd scenario that we're just going to have to adjust to as we get going in, but definitely losing the alts charges up as we try to reset the map and make it as fair as possible in these... Uh, odd circumstances does end up hurting the Toronto Defiant because they they are going to lose their main combo which is going to be that Nano and that Blade and we shall see we are getting back to it just to reset the scenario Dallas is up 2-0 over the Toronto Defiant in Dallas's final qualifier for the Summer Showdown of course, they are at the bottom of the standings right now, but the two other teams at the bottom of the standings, Washington and Boston, will play later today. Yes, even after this match, there are two more matches yet to go. A full day of Overwatch action for you. Let's see exactly how this ends up looking. Don't tell me we're pausing again. No, I think it's... Just uh, re-ramping up? Yes, I believe so. I okay, think, um, it's just our admin checking if the spawns are correct and everyone spawned okay, in the cool. right spot. Okay. We are, cool. we are good. We're about to go into game, so here we are. <laughs> I, I mean, it's never. I, I don't think I've ever witnessed this before. I'm trying to wrap my brain. I think I've seen it once. So. Um, yeah, but I mean, you see so. it pause enough on the screen, it just gives you that pang of fear in your stomach. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's like, okay, so the spawns will be correct so and reset. Yes. Yeah. They're on payload We're now. Okay, so here we go. We are the... back in the game, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, just let you know, yeah. yeah. We are. But it's gonna be a battle for the shuttle, oh, as Gibraltar is always yeah. a battle for this high ground right here. Oh, too bad at all. Fragility's head oh, did get clicked. No mercy. So uh, now it's just Doha just farming up a storm. This is what I'm talking about. This kind of range now that he is uh, Doha is sitting in. It's so easy now for Genji to get such consistent damage down with a yeah. right click because that spread reduction. And it allows you to make the decision a, a lot easier too of, oh, I did enough with that right click. Now it's time to dash melee combo and get in. <laughs> I love logics, man. I love Onyx as well. That's uh, Oh, that snipe onto Crimzo. That is gonna hurt at the fuel and their momentum. Um, it was really funny there seeing both Only God and Logics kind of almost out bait each other out, like outsmart each other, like knowing that you don't repeat the same window. So they both then went down to the lower and tried to look at each other there. They're back up to the higher. <laughs> that was quite funny. But Crimson unfortunately uh, took the death there. And they will be just resetting ever so slightly. Doha has the blade, but he is also now dead. Uh, this is just Widowmaker <laughs> versus the Genjis right now. Just as like it's going to be a reset for the fuel. Yeah, and they they had high ground too. They had the shuttle control on top. Luckily for them, the cart has been pushed far enough that they should still have decent control of the map. Uh, but the tanks are going to try to go up to the high ground here as Gamsu is just going to touch the cart to prevent it from rolling back down. Good. They're still trying to build this towards Nana Blade. Crimzo's got 99%. They're going to have it. He's waiting for it. Doha is lining up. It's just he's only 5% away. There's the Nano. There's the Blade. Deflect on the sleep. Insta-kill onto Kariv. Dashes to the back line. Can't quite find the brig. 180s gets it, but gets meleeed by Logics in the end. But the damage has already been done. Numlocked as well went down to the hands of Only God. And now Gamsu pushing everybody back all the way to that spawn point. And that should be a cap for the fuel. There it is. 4 minutes and 10 seconds to move on to third. Well, he completely locks the door, and this is not where you really want to be spawning. It's going to be interesting to see if Dallas tries to clean up these kills, because spawning there usually really hurts your squad, and you have to jump off the edge. But yeah, I think but Toronto are just going to take this as a chance to fight on the payload again, rather than resetting. Now they back up and will get off of that cart. Doha kind of, it seemed like he was just juking a little bit there. It looked like he was going to go to the high ground with the Nano Blade, and then drops down and takes the Ana down first as a target. Really nice play. His Genji's been great today. It has indeed. Now, how do they face against this? They're going to have to back off there. I don't think there's any way. You don't 
You don't peak logics ever, especially not when he has the sights. They can still move the payload up a little bit. It's not uh, rounded the corner just yet. Agility is now about to get that blade online. Early Nano actually going onto the Winston instead to try and stop that blade from doing anything. Agility's got boot back in the meantime though, and he does have the extra dash, but he hits Shield Bash straight away, taken out by Painbrush. That's the perfect kiting from the fuel to stop that blade from doing anything, Hex. Yeah, really nice. And you can Nano Winston there and not even worry about it because Doha was only at 30-something percent. Now he's gotten that up pretty quickly, but oh, the way these Anas are playing, they're charging Nano so very fast that by the time you really need the closeout combo ultimate, you're going to have it. This also lets Oni God set up in one of the best spots to ever play Widow uh, design in Overwatch. He's just got the back line there. And we're nearing the Nano Blade. Do you wait or you just go Blade here? No, I think no he's way yet. Oh, no, he's going anyway. It doesn't matter. Straight into the floor. Gets the reset off Roki, but all oh, Logic's on the side. He was so close to him, too. I would love to see that POV. Only God will take to the sky. Take Leg uh, Logic's head clean off as well. Still a bad spot for them to be in, though. Nice sleep onto a little. It doesn't matter, though. Let's be real. Spawn advantage still for life. the Defiance. Oh, <laughs> killed by the Venom Mine. Tried to dash Venom away, didn't get today. the healing in time. And that's actually going to be the big momentum shift now that the fuel are really after. Venom Mine claims another today. And Oni God in the checkmate spot for the Widow. Yeah, this is a Nano boost onto Gamsu. I like the way they're using the Nanos. He's going to get Bio Grenade, but it's going to mean little to nothing. Agility is going to go down. Roki as well to Doha's hands. He's going to be able to keep the rest of them in spawn as well. Couple of meters now remains for the fuel to get on to this last point. Doha might be able to earn himself another blade at this rate as well. He's charging these just crazy short amount of time. Never exposed. It's only the Prime Origin Winston. There's the blade. Dash into spawn from Roki. Shield bashing away from the fight. But the blade is way too much damage for them to deal with. They do kill Crimson. But it is all Dallas Fuel in the kill feed. 1 minute and 29 seconds in the time bank for the next attack. If Toronto can make it to the third point, that is. Uh, it's, it's just a really good example of why this game can be so difficult to balance because one thing just changes the entire feel of a hero. I mean, just limiting the spread onto right clicks means more consistent damage, which means more blades, which means, uh, I mean, obviously blade is a fight finisher, but that consistent damage also means you, your dashes are going to get there and clean up in time, which means more dash resets, which means more damage. And Genji looks really, really good right now. Um, so many changes have come into this hero, but you know, it's good to have these heroes cycled in and out. It's, it's far too long where heroes are just non-existent in the meta. And despite my personal feelings on trying to fight Genjis, it's fun to watch. It's a fun hero to watch. Genji's always, any flashy hero, whether it's just flashy uh, via aim or just resetting with uh, with Genji, it's always a, uh, always a fun time to watch. Something like Doomfist yeah. as well is uh, really cool. I mean, it's just er early on when Genji first got released, Genji mains were so annoying on forums and anytime he got touched, it was just like, I, I once used the analogy that Genji mains are the DPS equivalent of Mercy mains and I stand by that <laughs> statement. I truly do. Anytime the hero got oh, touched man. at all and wasn't like overpowered, it would just be like, I'm uninstalling and it's, you know, so that uh, kind of okay. soured me early on but watching, <laughs> watching the pros play Genji is an absolute treat. Oh yeah, someone like Doha as well. Probably out his mind right now. Double shield for Dallas Steel on defense. It's gonna be die for Toronto. I wanna see if Toronto actually do decide to switch here. To something that's a little bit more uh, double shield like. But it doesn't look like they're going to. They're gonna stick with this dive. It's gonna be a logic versus only god. Ooh, hit in the side there. Luckily he managed to escape with his life. Comes up to the big dive for Agilities. Oh my word, someone will note, please. I think actually Painbrush and Crimson were uh, uh, LOS there by the bubble from uh, Numblocks, which is always rather frustrating if you're a healer. Rogue is actually back onto the Mercy, so a damage boosted blade with a Valkyrie plus Nano is just Sayonara to the back line of fuel. Agilities is going to get so much pocket potential, plus the damage boost also, which is going to help it build the blade quicker. And you can see they're almost up to 100% already. Yeah, but they do have to go back because they lost Nevix, and you really can't complete a dive. You do need that defense matrix. It's so important to be able to leapfrog with your Winston. It's a nice nade spot, by the way. If you can uh, splash it on the wall to the right-hand side, it can really put a dampener on the heels from the from the fuel or just any team. Blue box a little bit more difficult to land a nade on. You can just kind of hit the ceiling. There's the nano. There's the blade. Dash straight in. Agility finds two, and everybody falls to the ground right on his lap. There's the fourth as well. Agilities. That's what I want to see. 
You said it before, Hex. Hey, uh, Genji is a wonder to watch, and you're seeing right here why he's one of the most popular heroes in the game. If you can pull off yeah. stuff like that, it feels all so good. I give it maybe a week before people complain that Nano Boost is just ruining the game. Maybe It's too OP. <laughs> Take his speed boost away. We took the speed boost away. Take his damage boost away. No, we're not doing that. Just make him glow. That's all he needs. Let's make him glow. Make him a bigger target. <laughs> oh, nice kill on to note. Again, he's getting perma pockets by Roki as well. So Agility is just doing an absurd amount of damage with that damage boost. Oh, Numlox is in the back. Sleep. Unfortunately, gets woken up, though. And now he's going to be able to push out the uh, the rallying brig, which is going to stop a lot of that armor going through. Doha gets taken out by Logix, who can sit back in the server room. The rallying brig on the payload got naded, so no healing for you. And that will be the second point capped. Rather fast time, mind you, as well, uh, regardless of yep. this reset happening. Well, they're, they're keeping pretty pace. good if you're Toronto. I think Dallas had about 450 on the clock at after a second, and uh, yeah. Toronto was able to hit 420 on their clock uh, on the way through. So really good, and now they're in position to be able to take high ground here, and this is always the most important part of uh, Gibraltar. You don't really want to get yes. shut out on your offense, shut especially against a Widow, because there's no good options to come back in through the doorways once the main shuttle bay doors close. So nice fight, Toronto showing signs of life after the pause. As an anime, yet again, they're all in a small room. Crimzo's history, so is Paintbrush, no one escaping him. Even Gamsu tried in there to try and get something. He was like, I'm going to kill him, I swear. I got the damage, but it's not going to happen. Agility's with a 5k, 6k, maybe. Oh, he's poisoned. Can he get him? There's a lot of people in the spawn, though. Yeah, no way. Doha's going to try and touch just in time. No one can get there. And a steamroll for the Defiant, regardless of Cruz DCing or not. Spirits are definitely rising high right now. Yeah, it's so important to be able to get that capture point too. And 450 on the clock to blaze through second. Second is where Gibraltar is won or lost a lot of the times, in my opinion. And the few will know that they have to burn some clock down on this. So they're going to take an early fight, try to spawn camp this a little bit until they get pushed out of it so that they can take one fight here, one fight at the corner, and maybe one last one at the very, very end. And Fuel's got the keys to do this too. They could just nano blade right in right now if they want to. Yeah, they've also got the sights as well. Self just tried to launch in. The Nano Bay's to the back. Doha finds the one restart onto Nevix. Can he find more? Just he's now trying to scurry for spawn. Look how far up Dallas Fuel are holding. They kind of had to, though, because the self destruct was launched uh, at their back line. So they were forced to in that instance. But it worked out for them regardless. Yeah, but this is the play, too. Like I said, you want multiple fights. There's times where if you just back up and hold corner, if you get completely wiped on corner, then you're struggling to even get out of your spawn as the opposing team is just banging the door down. So they get that early fight. They're just trying to bleed the clock here as much as possible. They'll get a fight at corner, and if it doesn't go all the way bad and it gets scrappy, yeah. then they'll have a fight at spawn as well. I was just waiting for it once again. Just, whoa, what the? What was that? That looks very weird. Looked like he was wiggling while he was using the grapple there. Agility's with the blade, 4% away. Kariba also is ever so close to that nano. The combo is going to come online them for yet again. There you go, dash straight to the back, the sleep misses. Oh, paintbrush, please run. He gets moved away, the anti-synergy, but what was that? He deflected something, I'm not entirely sure what it was. Potentially a shot from Onigod directly into paintbrush. And Agility finds the kill onto note as well as Doha. Oh, Brady is so good at this game. Just give him the Genji 24-7, never nerf him, please. Yeah, Only got trying to get that shot in there. There should be at least one more fight, but it's sights now for Logix in that perfect spot on the Widow. And everyone anti right now. Dallas has to wait even longer. They're going to have to get a great blade or a great self-destruct, but Crimson's not there yet with the Nano. Crimson's just trying to desperately keeping his supports alive. There's the blade. Can he find anything? He's got the nade on him. That's almost perfect. Agility's managed to find him. At least securing the kill. And Logix is also going to erase Oni God. And now it's only the tanks and the supports left for the fuel to get on the point, but they've still got the ults. Gamsu and Note are ready and waiting. Oh, Agility. Yeah, he's got nothing to swing at. He unleashes the blade. He didn't have the nano at his back, so I wasn't all wasted. Fuel still have a spawn advantage. Doha and Oni God get back onto the point. It's Tracer and Doom and clean up the rest. 
super intelligent switches here. I mean, Doha is able to come back out and then the Tracer to come back out as well because really you don't want to be running a Widow trying to come out and deal with Logix who's in that great positioning already. Logix knows the doors to check and now that you've bought the space, Oni Guy can come back, Doha can switch back onto it, but really smart choices there when you need that insta-kill and also you need a Tracer to be able to go pressure the Tracer, pressure the back line. They get a couple of kills and now Toronto Defiant will not beat the Dallas Fuel time. They have to complete the map or we're looking at a sweep. Oh, Mr. Logix is in trouble. Please, someone save Mr. Logix. Kareem and Roki, maybe a little bit more trouble. One minute and 28 seconds. Time back now lower than Fuels. They haven't got played. Look, Kareem 17% to Nano, man. Like, that I is just a long way Anna's. away. I love good Anna's that don't even look at Winston's. You know, like, I, dude, I, I'm not even that ticklish. So, <laughs> Crimson's getting pressured down by the Winston. He keeps his eyes on the front line, steps out of the bubble, and just keeps healing everybody. So Paintbrush comes back and deals with the Winston easily. And now Crimzo and Doha are nearing the Nano Blade again. Agility is in Kariv a long way away. Oh, Logix again in trouble getting jumped onto the back. Primal Rage <laughs> for Gamsu. Someone save Logix. Throw him an armor pack at least. He's all right, though, for the time. Kariv launches the nade at his feet as uh, the rest of his team, unfortunately, going down. These dives from the fuel are so clean. Doha is going to also take out Numlox. It's going to be final fight territory now for the Defiant to try and cap the third point. Agility is so low. One Shuriken will take him out. It's going to be nope. That finishes him off. They're going to be out to touch. The payload is uh, slowly crept its way back, Hex. But they've got to run into a Nanoblade coming from the fuel. 1% yeah. away for Kariv, though, and they've got a Nanoblade of their own. The most new meta defining fight that we'll ever see. It's going to be Nanoblade versus Nanoblade. Who can get more done? Who can hit a, a sleep dart? Who can get hit a stun? Nanoblade in the back like Overwatch of old. A perfect blade for Doha. Instantly killing the supports. Oh, Logic doesn't stand a chance. The perfect ghost dash as well back into spawn. Doha? Hello? No one, on the, well, there's two people on the point, but no supports. All this damage is permanent. Numlock, Sayonara, the self-destruct on the point to find something, but it's bubbled. Doha oh, it's dies Doha. the victory firework. Dallas <laughs> Fuel will take the W on Gibraltar. 3-0 in the series as well. It looks like a meta that Dallas Fuel could be very comfortable in when you can run dive pretty consistently uh, throughout every point. I mean, maybe the map set helped out, maybe the meta helps out a lot. I mean, you saw them running double shield early on and it just didn't look as good. So you can play dive defensively as long as you have the cohesion for it. The tank line for Dallas looked great. Oni God stepped up. They put him in position to succeed on heroes that don't necessarily have to dive with the team or at least know or uh, at least have the coordination. He was on Tracer a little bit and then they just put him on long range hit scan. It's like we're going to do our thing, just support us and hit some shots. And Doha's Genji was really, really good. And it's nice to see the back line for Dallas kind of starting to gel. There's some questions. Is Paintbrush a good pickup? Is Crimson the right option? It looks like they're really getting there and kind of working on their synergy. Dallas, look, this is a team that they should beat. They've had a rough schedule from this point on, but anything can happen in these tournaments. Dallas could make a run at it, get some bonus wins. Yeah, that backline doing wonders for them. Like you said, almost in perfect sync. If uh, Crimson gets dove on, hey, guess what? I got an armor pack waiting for me. Thank he you, wasn't Paintbrush. Even and then he was able to, <laughs> yeah, to dive out and heal the rest of his team. It's almost perfect. Yeah. Dallas Fuel looking so good this week. Toronto to find, unfortunately, a little bit lackluster. They did have a DC, which is obviously quite That's unfortunate. Problem, yeah. but, but they look good on Gibraltar. Like, it was pretty close. Happen. Oh, yeah, definitely. I will say that. And player of the match presented by Xfinity is going to be note today for the Dallas Fuel. You saw it in the last uh, the last couple of fights, how well him and Gansu were just able to execute onto the back line. And as soon as they're able to do that, um, it just frees up space for the DPS. Ideally, yeah. your diva wants to be able to get on the enemy Ana to eat the nade, to eat the dart, to eat the sleep dart, to eat the, just the healing. And no, was perfectly able to do that. One of the most consistent players I think we have in the off tank role, and one of the nicest guys in the league as well. And he's always been just in the right place at the right time, which is all you can really expect from your D.Va. The moment they think they have Gamsu because his Primal Rage is down to 200, here comes the D-Matrix to clear out all the damage, and then here comes all the healing from everybody else. And a lot of people kind of bash Note for being that one Note flex player, but his Sigma has improved week after week. We saw very good Sigma play on Hanamura, so you need that versatility to be able to play not only dive, but teams are going to be more successful at catching the dive than Toronto was today, and that's when you're going to have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and double shield and double shield to me the defining factor is how well your sigma and orissa work together if note and gamsu can bring the kind of chemistry they brought on the dive tanks today to the double shield meadow dallas could start picking up some wins as we go forward in the tournament
Yeah, they can. Remember, this is the last week of the uh, summer qualifiers as well for the summer showdown. It's all to play for. Dallas is going to be happy with that victory, Hex. The maps, too, going up to, I believe, negative two, but they still managed to win. So it's definitely going to boost their rankings up just a little bit. And getting off a, a no-win scoreline as well is always going to be a big morale boost for the team, too. Yeah, well, Dallas definitely won't have to play in the play-in game right now because... I believe that they have uh, a, a one and two record with a negative two differential. This win over Defiant drops the Defiant to one and two with a negative three. So the Defiant are sitting in 11 and Uprising Injustice. Um, well, I mean, I think we still have to do some math on it. I don't do math on stream. I learned my lesson a long time ago. They will play later today, but they're sitting at 0 and two. So Dallas right now at nine in the summer showdown puts them on the outside of being able to pick your opponent. But there's still a lot of Overwatch left. A lot of teams sitting at one and one, Dallas, they don't control their own fate, but they did a good job of picking up the win today, and it seems very likely that they have punched their ticket to the Summer Showdown dance. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. There's a lot of uh, Overwatch still to come, though. Do not forget. And one of the big games tomorrow, too. Don't forget to look forward to that one. That's going to be the Shock versus the Philadelphia Fusion clash of the, some of the greats. It's going to be an exciting one, that is for sure. Now, how are Dallas really going to uh, evolve from here? Are they going to be able to continue to, to this uh, dive strat with the, the, the Genji with Doha? I think so, because one thing to remember is that with Hero Pools disappearing this week, it's going to continue on to the Summer Showdown too, and uh, having that flexibility is going to be oh so good. I think Dallas have really stepped into their own today. Everybody can be rather proud of their victory, and I think this is going to be an up and up for the team. <laughs> Doha has just been performing out of his mind. The tank line looks solid, like you said, and even with uh, Only God coming in, performing on ping too, is something to bear, honestly. Playing on ping isn't always that great. It's right. rather frustrating. Yeah, I mean, they, they played well. Only God looked like he came into his own, and I really like the starting six that they put in there. They didn't really make a ton of changes. They have a pretty deep bench, but I think this is the six that you're going to see that they may feel the most comfortable with, and why wouldn't you? I, the only question I have is when we do go back to a two-week hero pool uh, going forward after this tournament, after weeks out, whatever, uh, can they really adjust to it? But I think Only God is super yeah. flexible. I think Doha has shown his flexibility. So I, I have some faith in this team going forward, and if they can have have, I, I guess as a Dallas fan, I'd be cautiously optimistic. Now, if they go into the tournament and they get one and done, uh, or in the look bad doing it, that's not great. But I think it's it's really important that they 3 0 today with a new player, with this style. Uh, it's got to be confident for Dallas. But uh, Dallas fans are always cautiously optimistic because it's, you know, burn blue, and Dallas fans have been burned before. I'm hoping Cruz gets his power back at some point as well. It was rather unfortunate, obviously, with the yeah, DC. But Roki did. Uh, Roki didn't perform badly at all. I think the Mercy pick was actually pretty pretty good for him. Uh, of course, running the break can be, I think, a little bit difficult, especially if you've not been uh, practicing with the team a whole bunch. But coming in on the Mercy, one of his best heroes, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. He did perform rather well coming in at such short notice. The shortest notice possible, mind you, in the, straight in the middle of a map. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but there it is. We have got an Only God interview as well coming up rather shortly. So I'm excited to see what he has to say. A rather historied player, mind you mentioned it at the start but it's been a little while since I mentioned it before but I did play in Apex way back when I'm reunited and it's good to cast him again that is for sure Hex I mean you've casted him at some points too pre Overwatch League yeah yeah it's like definitely. we've got the two um, ready and yeah. waiting though we're going to jump over with Zoe who's going to chat with Only God I will indeed thank you so much guys and congratulations Only God thank you so much uh, now, let's uh, talk a little bit about the game you had, not just today, but also what transpired yesterday, not yesterday, last week. Nah. <laughs> um, your team received a lot of, well, I'd say criticism uh, for the performance last week. Uh, how did the team handle uh, all the comments, all the criticism, and were there any takeaways from that? I mean, uh, like we had a big talk after the game the next day. We had practice mm -hmm. and just really talked about what we need to work on. And uh, I mean, there was a lot of obvious issues that we could fix instantly. And but it, it was rough for all of us. I mean, you guys definitely came back, though, and uh, what a way to come back. This was a very decisive victory. Um, do you think this has something to do uh, maybe also with the meta now, since we're not playing with hero pools? Do you feel like the current meta with the last uh, patch is actually really fitting for your uh, for your team style? Yeah, I feel like this fits us a lot better. I mean, I've only been here for around two weeks, but 
so far it feels like it's a good fit for us. Like we have really flexible DPS lineup and just good tank and support lineup as well. So yeah. So yeah, since you are uh, one of the most recent members, uh, how has the transition into Al been for you, and how well are you gelling with the team now after two weeks of playing? I mean, the first day of scrims and going into the match as well, I was super nervous to be honest. Like, it was a big step up from contenders, but as the days go on, like I just got more friendly with the team and. I wasn't as nervous this match, and that helped me a lot. Are you uh, surprised with what you saw being played today uh, from your opposition, or did everything pretty much go as planned? It went as planned, as, as we did in scrims, I'd say, so not a big surprise. Do you think we're going to see any, any different compositions, or do you think what's been established so far today and also in the overnight matches is pretty much what you can expect in the summer showdown as well? I think we'll see a lot of similar comps, but people are going to have more time now to experiment and we might see a few surprises, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely helping that we're going to have uh, the same kind of meta going on for two weeks. So uh, it's going to be lots more to come in uh, the upcoming days. Uh, well, that's it already. Thank you so much, okay. Onigot. Thank you. All right. And we're now going to head into a very quick break. And afterwards, we are back with our next game of the day. And that will be the Vancouver Titan and the Boston Uprising.